And if you can communicate that, hey, being with us is special and, and every job matters, the biggest or the smallest, I think the right people will gravitate to the right culture. As you know, we teach that in Arte. And so I just think that it's absolutely true that you can find good people and very dangerous if you believe you can't. What's up, everybody? We've got one of my favorite people in the entire world on an interview. Like this time is literally the most important time for me because this man is one of the busiest human beings in the world. He's speaking with world leaders and he's got one of the most listened to podcasts, one of the most viewed people on the internet, literally a fastest growing social media influence on the internet. Got my man, Ed Milet. Hey, buddy, thank you so much for doing this. I'm really grateful. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate you, buddy. You no, know, I'm grateful for you, man. And it's good to be back. I love, love, love this group when I come speak to us. Well, I always agree to say yes. So thank you. Hey, man, uh, it all started with uh, a little conversation on Instagram. Uh, I really was so grateful for last year and listened to a podcast with you and Mike Rowe. And it really kind of, um, you know, it, it, it inspired this whole thing. It's it's not about blue collar. It's not about white collar. It's about work ethic. Yeah. And so, um, and I was like, dude, we got to have Ed back. Thank but, you. Uh, uh, back to that subject, you know, um, what do you think, you know, everybody complains about getting people into their business, people being entitled, not wanting to work in this economy. You know, what do you think is the problem with America there? Well, we're certainly softer than we used to be. Mike and I talked about that on the show. There's certainly a softness. I actually talk about this in the book, the, <clears throat> the one I have coming out. I talk about your reticular activating system in your brain. And basically it's the matrix of your life. And so you got to be really careful what you believe, because if you believe something, you're going to confirm it over and over and over again. A belief is like a table. And if you ha once you, your brain goes to work on finding legs, references, and the more legs it gets under it, the more it's like, oh, this is true. And then because you believe it, you see it everywhere. My experience is in all the businesses I own, I've got like 23 of them right now. There's a lot of people that still want to work. There are people that want to bust their ass. They just need to be found. And you got to have a reticular activator that's looking for those people. There's certainly a segment that's soft that would rather take free money and not leave their house. And we all know that. I mean, I'm, I'm involved in the construction industry myself, and I know about supply chain. I know about getting people to get there, show up consistently. I get all that stuff. But I think there are people, and I think you have to just believe that, that they want to come to work and do something great. And I think if they think you're doing something great, you've got high standards. More than anything, more than money, people want to be a part of something believe in something they can be proud of, something that brings them pride and value. And if you can communicate that, hey, being with us is special and, and every job matters, the biggest or the smallest, I think the right people will gravitate to the right culture. As you know, we teach that in Arte. And so I just think that it's absolutely true that you can find good people and very dangerous if you believe you can't. Amen. And, you know, you talk about a bigger purpose. You know, I kind of want to raise the status for the blue collar entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the same line of Mike, but really in our day, I meet so many of our brothers that are in this line of work. And, you know, a lot of times we've heard you talk about your superpowers in these closed rooms. And you've said it a couple of times that you have a superpower of discernment, that you can figure out someone's natural gifts. And, uh, you know, I was in a kind of follow up with you on that. No, you know, yeah. do you have anything specific that your companies rely on and in, in finding good people? I, I looked at this book this morning. It said, never hire a bad salesperson again. I'm like, who titled that book? Is that even possible? You know, <laughs> no, it's not possible. No. you and I no. both know that, right? No, I think I miss sometimes too, but I do think, listen, I think that most people, okay. Not everybody, but most people do. Everybody has a unique gift and talent. The, the, most people, I can see it in them. And most people, if you can find that gift or talent and then show them how they can express that gift. Mike Rowe's a good example. You're a great example of that. You are, by the way, lifting the culture and the standard and the perception of blue collar work. It's one of the reasons that I want to be there for me, because, you know, I'm thinking about my life, all the people in my life that have affected me, very few of them are white collar people. Actually, the people that have really helped me most in my life are blue collar people, people that have taught me the most lessons about hard work, about dedication. And most importantly, like I really care about the work I do. And I haven't learned that from white collar people. And there's nothing wrong with white collar people at all. But I've learned that from blue collar people. You ever you get a dude who really cares, you know, that pride and craftsmanship, that pride in a job well done. That is much more prevalent in the blue collar world, as you know much more prevalent because if you don't have that, 
you're not going to get referred. You're not going to get repeat clients. So it's, it's right out front and center in the blue collar world. So what I look for, believe it or not, more than skill set is their care that they care about the job they're going to do. I really feel like I can teach a lot of the skills. I think most, most people listening to this probably feel that way, but what you're deficient in is people who care, mm-hmm. people who care about the, the hard work, people who do it when you're not watching mm-hmm. people who give a crap about the quality of what they do of their expression. And I don't think enough blue collar people in general realize that really what you do really more than anything, oftentimes, even though there's a scientific aspect to it is art is art. Even if there's a step-by-step process of doing it, it's an art form. And it's really interesting. You go into a gallery, oh, this guy threw a bunch of paint up on a canvas. Wow, what art. But the truth is like, that's there's a perception to that art. In your art, it's not perception. It's either beautifully done or it's not, right? In all areas, in all crafts. And it's, it's just amazing to me that over time, the fact that all the work that people do in the blue car space is not viewed as art. I'm looking right now. Honestly, there's three guys in my backyard right now. They're all friends of mine. They've been here so long, right, with supply chain. But they're working on a wall, like a fire feature, and they built me a pool. It's a damn work of art. Now, there's a science to it, obviously, but it's a work of art. They literally took nothing that was there and created something magnificent. Yet, And by the way, what do people come over when they see it? What's the words they use? Man, that's beautiful. Yet it, the credit's never given to the person who did the craftsmanship. It's like the owner of the stuff gets the credit. In the art world, the painter gets the credit. In the blue collar world, the guy who paid for it gets the credit, which is insane, right? So it's an art form. And the more you attract people who like take that kind of pride in their art, no matter what it is, all right? I don't care what it is. They could be a mason. And you and I have talked about like roofing, obviously. There's an art form to it. And that pride in work is what I'm looking for when I hire because I can teach the skills. Amen. I love that. And uh, with this new book coming up, you know, one of the things I've heard you talk about when you're building a sales team is turn your nose into yeses. You know, when someone tells you no, go find somebody out of that connection. And, you know, our guys, they want to know how to hire, how to recruit, how to train. I'd say you're a master of that. Yeah. But uh, uh, what about the power of one more and uh, this new book? Well, they can go grab it. I'd go get it right now. You can pre-order it on Amazon. If you pre-order it, there's a gift. I want them at your event, number one but I'm doing an event that's free May 27th. Yes. I know you're going to watch it. I'm going to be there. It's really insane. It's me, Andy Priscilla, Mel Robbins, Eric Thomas, Marie Forleo, Jenna Kutcher, Jim Quick, Rob Deerdick. I'm probably forgetting somebody, Maria Menunos. all free. If you pre-order my book, if you want to go to it in person, you buy more books. But the point of it is, I just wanted to give it as a gift to all these people that have supported me all these years. So if you go to maxoutlive.com, you can get Get access to the event, just pre-order one of my books. But the book itself, bro, I wrote because my dad died, as you know. And when my dad died, I learned all these lessons from my dad. He was an alcoholic the first half of his life. He tried to get sober one more time and it turned his life around. He stayed sober one more day at a time. And I've learned the power of one more call, one more rep in the gym, one more. I think you're much closer to your dreams than you think. You're one decision, one relationship, one meeting, one thought, one encounter, one little mini video like this away from totally changing your life. And so in the book, I'm, I'm my favorite book of all times, this one right here, Think and Grow Rich. Amen. And I'm proud that this morning my book passed it up, oh, which is wow. like weird. Yesterday I was one behind it. We passed it up. I'm proud of that. And I love this book. But here's the deal. You don't just think and get rich. You just don't. There are things you got to do. And then there's books on what to do, but there's never been a book written on what do I think and what do I do simultaneously? What's the thought and the action paired together that has power? And so I go through like 19 specific techniques mentally, specific physical things you do that create a chain, a transformation. I call it the ultimate guide to success and happiness or happiness and success rather, because there's never been a book written like it. And I know it sounds like a book promo. I just feel like very, it's actually very heavy. If I'm going to be really honest, there's no fluff in this book. I probably should have put more fluff in it, like bubble gum and rainbow stuff. It's just technique after technique, after technique, after technique. It's probably not even an easy read to be really honest. I'm not selling the book. I'm telling you though, if you complete that book, you'll be a different human being. And so I'm really confident that that's true. And it's just stuff I've done all my life. The reason I wrote it last thing, I'll tell you, I realized after my dad died, I'm next. Mm, 
That's one heck of a reminder right there. And I will tell you, I heard a little section of this book, the concepts, the principles mm-hmm. at an Arte meeting at Andy yeah, you did. and it changed my life, man. Thank I went you, man. back to my team and last year was the best year ever. But what I'm most excited, you want to know what are we going to be speaking about at the event? Yeah. Is some of these new ideas and concepts that I heard behind the scenes. And that was more of an intimate audience. And, you know, I'm just so pumped that, you know, you have so much to bring to the table as far as CEO advice, leadership advice, sales advice, recruiting advice. And a lot of times they just get a fraction of it in a presentation. Oh yeah. And so I I want to say one thing about you and this group that gathers, I speak a lot. It's not my main career, right? I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, but I have to tell you, you do it first class, brother. And you care. Like, I'm backstage with him, guys. He mm-hmm. cares about how the event's going. He cares about the value you're getting. His team cares. And I'm not just saying that because I'm real candid. Me and I, just, me and I had a conversation before this thing started. I'm like, hey, man, you got to get something together, right? I will, I will tell you the truth. And so when I tell you that I speak a lot and I know what people that host events care and what people that host events are just trying to host the event and get a buck, which ones want people to grow, care about the quality of the event, are emotionally invested in the event, want it to be great, Lee does. And so does his team. And it shows in every little detail they do from the minute I land to when I leave, they treat you magnificently and they care and they put on great events. And I don't say that I do a lot of little videos like this before things I speak at always try to find something nice to say, but not what I'm saying to you guys. This is a very unique group when it gathers the networking, the relationships, how much he cares about what the speaker says from the stage what he says from the stage. And so I'm honored to be a part of it. I, I sincerely am. I'll come back every year. He asks me because I, I feel like the experience grows me. I think I helped the group a little bit too, but I, I, I absolutely am better for every time I go. So I, go to the event, be there. I'll be there with new stuff. This is not last year's message. In fact, there'll be no repeat. We're going to go deeper than what's in here into some of the, the principles in the book. Guys, go to bluecollarconference.com. Get your tickets May 27th through the 29th. And uh, all of you are, are, are wanting, they come to me, they say, I need this sales manager. I need this general manager. And one time you said something to me, you said, Lee, or it was a group of us, you said, you all need to find goats in your business. Yeah. You need to get differentiators that are on like they're the best in their space. Yeah. And here recently, I've had more and more of those people and I've got some big ideas maybe even with you in mind. And, and what's your advice? This was my question I saved for last to getting goats in your business. I mean, because yeah. I see these guys involved with you. Now, how do you do that? Yeah, you're right. The, um, first off, the 100% right. Look, and players win championships. And so I don't care what the business is, what the sport is. In a book I talk about, I, have a, I call it a one more multiplier, a whole chapter on it. These are people who multiply your organization when they get involved. You have to be intentional about finding them, express that you're looking for them. I, identify them when they're there. Goats want you to see it. Goats want to say, you're great. Goats want you to, there's a magnetism. I feel like I'm a goat in speaking, right? Absolutely. When someone sees that of me, I will go do that. So you got to start looking for me. You're not just hiring to hire. You're not just trying to get good people. How many people go, man, just look at some good people. What a crap standard. What a low standard. I'm looking for the greatest. I'm looking for the best, or I'm looking for the person who wants to be the best, wants to be mentored into goat status. And when you begin to just express that and you're building a team of goats, all of a sudden the whole vibrational frequency for real of your organization changes. And these people are the ones who grow stuff when you're not there. Hmm. You don't have to look over their shoulder. You don't have to wonder. They show up 40 minutes early. You're like, bro, it's five. You're off the clock. You're like, man, let me just, I'm going to knock this out for 40 more minutes. Right? Those are the goats. And to the extent that you can find them and, and the, how do you find them? You're looking, you express it, you emit it, you talk about it all the time. It has to become part of your vernacular of what you speak about and think about because your RAS finds them. Last thing, your RAS is the filter of your life. Chapter two of the book, I call it the hmm. matrix. Hmm. Things slow down when you're intentional about looking for something. Hmm. You've already heard me say this before. I'm buying, I'm buying a Tesla in like 35 minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm not a Tesla dude. Okay. It's a friend of mine. It's a goofy ass car, but like, I, I want to have one. And this is the expensive one. I thought they were all 50 grand. This thing's like 140 grand. I have no idea why. Here's the point. I decided to buy it like four days ago. I am freaking seeing Tesla is everywhere. Now parking lots, three lanes over on the other side of the freeway, Tesla, were they always there? They were, but I wasn't looking for them before. Now my RES filters out all the Hondas, all the Hyundais, 
all the all the um, Range Rovers and sees Teslas. That's how your mind works when it's intentional. Goats have to be your Tesla. Amen. Goats have to become your Tesla, and you'll see them. And I'm going to talk about that at the event. You're speaking my language, brother. And uh, my my big mission, uh, I already feel like I'm the goat in roofing, but, you know, I got a lot to prove. Anyways, I want to become the Chick-fil-A of roofing, and uh, I really want your help, and I'm going to show you about that. But you talk about one thing, and I wonder if this is inside the book. It's about becoming the one, the one who changes yeah. your family tree, the one who brings a different circumstance for the next. Yeah. Now you've obviously been that for your family. Yep. What advice do you have maybe to your younger self about becoming that one? Cause a yeah, lot, by lot the way, of you can look at my body language changes. I'm like ready to go. Right. So ch the chapter where I write about your RAS, I call it the matrix. Why in the matrix, if you've ever seen the movie, almost everybody has, it's about Neo. Why is Neo special? Because they believe Neo is the one, mm. right? He's the one. And in my family, I'm the one. In your family, you're the one. Those of you listening to this, you should be the one. And I'll give you the advice in a minute, but the one changes the way the family thinks forever, lives forever, the emotions forever, their quality of life. The world no longer has their freaking thumb on the Milet family like they have for mm. generations anymore. And when you find a family who's happy and successful, sometime back in their lineage, they weren't until the one shows up and the one changes it forever. What I would have gone back to my younger self and said, hey, Listen to me, young man. God does not qu call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And you are called to do something great for your family. Because I, when I was young, I'm like, well, I don't know about this. Well, the industries I'm in is limited. With the, you know, I'm not that big of a, this is stupid. Like, I'm not that one. There's no evidence in my past. I was a good baseball player, but I wasn't the one. I was a good student, but I wasn't the one. I'm a nice guy, but I'm not the nicest guy. I'm a relatively smart dude, but I'm not the smartest dude. So there's nothing about me that's the one until I decided I was. And believe it or not, just that decision, one decision away from changing your life, I'm going to be the freaking one. I don't care if it takes me one year, five years, or 50 years before I get the hmm. F off this earth, before I get off this earth, I'm going to change my family tree forever. And once, I, if I could go back, I decided that about 28. I wish hmm. I could go back to me at 21 and go, hey, man. You're the one. And because you believe that, you start, you start finding the people, places, things, projects, opportunities that would deliver on that commitment. And I was oblivious to all of them for seven years. Then mm. when I decided I was the one, they became my Teslas. The accounts, the meetings, the relationships, the contracts, the customers all started finding me mm. because my RES was looking for them every single day of my life because I was going to change my family tree forever. So it's a decision, but it's a real one. And, the, and by the way, when you first make it, you're lying. I'm the one. <laughs> but when you repeat it visually, you repeat that sucker over and over, man. When you're driving in the car, just a glimpse, what it would look like? What it would feel like? You do it over and over and over again, over and over and over again. You're changing the synopsis in your brain. And eventually your brain goes, shit, you're the one, right? Amen. And then if you believe like I believe, like there's, there's a God in heaven, last thing I'll say, you were born to be the one. You have the DNA of the king and kings, king of kings running through your blood, man. That's why I've never, people say, man, I like that you're confident, but you don't, there's a humility about you. My humility comes from, we're brothers. Mm. I'm no better than you. And you're no better than me. We have the exact same God in heaven whose blood's running through us, right? So if I can do it, you can do it. And if you can do it, I can do it. If we think and act the same way. And that's what we're going to talk about there. Guys, if you want to become the one in your family, you want to draw a line in the stand, raise the status of the blue collar entrepreneur, join us May 27th through the 29th. We're giving back to full yes. Memorial Day weekend. Let's literally, guys, you can repeat the same mistakes. And, and that's the definition of insanity, or you could do something about it. Spend the weekend with people to lift you up. You will be in a safe place. We'll inspire you. My man, Ed, he's changed my life so many different times. And I just, I mean, I'm very, very grateful that you were able to um, come back out here and talk to our audience again, man. I thank you so much for doing this interview. Uh, I, uh, I'm very grateful. And uh, man, thank you so much. My pleasure. Can't wait to see everybody there. All right, brother. Have a good day.